Hi, I'm Wade, I'm a paramedic, and I'm also a EMT instructor with Idaho Medical Academy. Today in this video, we will be going over strokes and what a stroke assessment would look like on a call. Medical in seven, please be en route to 2323 South Vista for a 50 year old male complaining of weakness. Hi, sir. What's your name? My name is Hubert. Hubert? My name is Wade. Nice to meet you. What's going on today, Hubert? Well, I was working on my computer and all of a sudden I started feeling some numbness and tingling in my left hand and all of a sudden it just stopped working. Okay, your left hand started working. Um, let me ask you some silly questions. Yeah. Do you know what city we're in right now? Yeah, Boise. Do you know what year it is? 2012. 2022. 2022, not quite. Uh, Do you know who the president is? Uh, uh, Biden. Okay. And then, do you know why I'm here today? Yeah, my coworkers were concerned and called 911. Okay. So when I arrived on scene, my general impression of the patient is that I see a gentleman kind of slouching over to one side, um, appears to be a little bit altered as far as his mentation goes. So I was able to quickly ascertain that he was alert when we're going through the AVPU scale based on him being able to track me as I'm walking in with his eyes as well as him communicating as I uh, approach him. I then asked him his orientation questions, his person, his place, time and event to kind of see where he is and if he's either A and O times four, alert and oriented times four, or he is altered. All right, I'm gonna to listen to your lung sounds, okay, Hubert? Okay. Go ahead and take a deep breath for me. Take another one. Okay, I'm gonna get under your arm. So now we've started moving into the ABCs, our airway, breathing, and circulation. I can tell immediately that his airway is clear and patent because he's talking to me. I don't seem to be concerned about any obstruction to the airway. I checked his circulation almost immediately, right? I grabbed his hand when I was shaking it, introducing myself, putting my fingers on his wrist, feeling that radial pulse. I then decided to listen to his lung sounds. Once again, we are looking for um, the quality of the respirations. Is it wheezing, clear, strider, or ronchi? Uh, I noticed that he had equal and bilateral chest movement, and I also did notice that he did not have any difficulty breathing. He wasn't seeming to struggle to breathe. Um, with his circulation, however, I did notice he did have an irregular pulse. It wasn't beating in a regular cadence. It was an abnormal cadence. So, Hubert, I'm going to have my partner here get some vital signs on you, okay? I'm also okay. going to include what's called a blood glucose, okay? We're going to poke your finger. Um, based on my findings so far, I'm a little bit concerned about you, and I think it'd be a good idea for us to run you into the hospital, okay? Thank Pretty concerned with my findings. Okay, thank you. Okay. Based on my findings and with my vital signs, I decided that this patient is what we would consider a um, emergent transport. We're gonna get him transported to the hospital so that he can receive a more definitive level of care. Okay, Hubert, I'm gonna ask you some questions about yourself. Do you have any allergies to any medications? Uh, yes, I'm allergic to penicillin. You're allergic to penicillin, okay. Yeah. Do you take any medications regularly? Uh, yes, I take Coumadin and I take lisinopril. Okay. Do you have any medical history at all? Yes, I have. Well, my doctor told me I have an irregular heart rhythm. Mm -hmm. That's what I take Coumadin for. And I take lisinopril for my blood pressure. Okay. Okay. When's the last time you ate or drank anything? I had some coffee this morning mm -hmm. and I had a hot pocket breakfast burrito. Mm -hmm. Don't tell my wife. I won't. Okay, mm -hmm. she'll be upset. Mm -hmm. And then what were you doing before we called, just as a recap here? Uh, I was working on my computer and then it just, it, it just started happening. Mm -hmm. The weakness. That weakness, and yeah. it just came out of nowhere on you? Yeah. Okay, 
Okay. So we just got our sample history, our signs, symptoms, allergies, medications, pertinent medical history, last oral intake, and events leading up to the scenario. The patient did say he has an allergy to penicillin. Now that being said, it is not super pertinent to the call type today, though it should be considered moving forward in case we are going to be um, giving them to the hospital and they might need antibiotics. The big findings with our sample history actually come from his medications and his pertinent, hi pertinent history. In his medications, he listed that he takes lisinopril, which is used to help control blood pressure. He also takes Coumadin, which is known as a blood thinner, makes it easier for blood to pass through the body. When I asked him about his personal history or his pertinent history, he did say that he has a history of an abnormal heart rhythm. Abnormal heart rhythm, such as atrial fibrillation, will have an irregular beat, so it will not be at the regular cadence. It also will put you as a higher risk for clotting factors because of that blood pooling in the heart. So he takes the Coumadin related to his atrial fibrillation. That is a key context clue to help guide us to our answer about what's going on today. Okay. So Hubert, I'm trying to get a little bit deeper understanding of what's going uh, on today, okay? Uh, uh, I'm gonna ask you some sillier questions as well. Have you drank any alcohol today? No. Okay, are you a diabetic at all? No, I'm not diabetic. Not diabetic? Have you ever had seizures or been diagnosed with epilepsy? No. Okay. Um, what about, medic or excuse me, have you taken your medications appropriately? Yeah, I take it every morning. Every morning? You're not yeah. taking more than you should? No. You're not taking any extracurricular illicit substance? No. Okay. Um, what about if you're urinating? Does that burn at all? Do you have any uh, discomfort urinating? No. Okay. Um, what about falls? Have you fell at all? Hit your head lately? No, no falls. Okay. What about feeling sick? Have you had any fevers, chills, coughs? No, no. Uh, okay. And then any mental health conditions I need to be aware of? No, just just life stress. Okay. And then have you ever had anything called a stroke before? No, no, I never had a stroke before. Okay. Um, well, Hubert, I think you might be having a stroke right now. I think that's what that weakness is on the left side of your body. That's why you feel a little funny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, a test we call the FAST test, so it's a couple of silly things. So I'm going to have you look right here at my nose, give me a okay. big smile, show me all your teeth. Perfect. All right, I'm going to take your arms here, Hubert. I'm going to hold them here, close your eyes okay. for me. I'm going to drop your hands, try and keep your hands right where they are, okay? Okay. okay. Sounds good. Go ahead and relax that hand, Hubert, and open your eyes. Um, I'm going to ask you to repeat a phrase for me. Can you do that? Yes. Can you repeat, you can't teach a dog new tricks? You can't teach a new dog new, new tricks. Okay. And then when did this start? Do you know the time that this started by chance? Uh, probably 30 minutes ago. Probably 30 minutes ago. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, Hubert, based on my findings, I would say you're having what we're calling a stroke. Okay, something's going on with your brain and it's causing the left side of your body to not function normally. Okay. So I think we need to get you moving. So we'll get our gurney ready and we'll get you moved over before we get you in the ambulance, okay? Thank you. Okay. As you can see in the video, I was asking questions pertaining to the AEIOU TIPS acronym. The S in TIPS is stroke, which led me to start a Cincinnati pre-hospital stroke assessment, otherwise known as FAST. So if we're looking at the patient, I noticed I had him smiling, I noticed the left-sided facial droop. I had him raise his arms, palm side up. I noticed left-sided arm drift. The patient was also slurring his words, and he was also a little bit of what we call aphasic. He was unable to completely answer my questions, and his words kind of seemed a little bit off. And the most important factor of this is he was able to tell me the time. When did this start? In strokes, time is one of the most critical aspects to making sure the patient has a higher successful survivability rate. Uh, just to clarify, I've got some questions for you, okay, Hubert? Uh, have you been on any long trips lately? Been sitting in a car or on an airplane? No. No, have you ever had uh, any recent surgeries? At all? No, re no recent surgeries. No sur recent surgeries, but you do have that abnormal heart rhythm, right? Yeah. And you do take Coumadin for that, yeah. the blood thinner. Okay. 
So following my FAST assessment, or my Cincinnati pre-hospital stroke assessment, I was able to determine that the patient is displaying signs of a stroke. Now my treatment plan, being an EMT basic, is a little bit limited. All I can really do is to support the ABCs. If the oxygen level starts getting low, I can provide some supplemental oxygen. Okay, another part of our treatment plan is going to be how fast are we transporting this patient. They would be considered a rapid transport or a critical patient. And while en route to the hospital, we would be reevaluating this patient's vital signs every five minutes or so due to their critical status. General Hospital, Medic 1-7. Go ahead, Medic 1-7. Medic 1-7 currently en route to facility code 3 emergent with an alert and oriented 50, that's 50-year-old male. Chief complaint today is going to be a code CVA, or code brain attack. The patient is displaying signs of left-sided facial droop, left arm drift, slurred speech. It began about half an hour ago, last known well half an hour ago. Last blood sugar we got on him was going to be 86. Last set of vitals we have for this patient. Pulse rate is 100. Last blood pressure, 185 over 100, setting 95% on room air. We have a current ETA to your facility of about six minutes. Any questions? So that was an example of a real radio report that I would give for a patient having a stroke. That's all we really have for you guys today. Like and subscribe this video. Don't forget to check out the, our website, idahomedicalacademy.com, and keep an eye on the YouTube page. We'll have videos be coming out pretty frequently so that we can keep you guys in the loop and how to best serve your community and help others. Thanks, guys. You can keep that.